Good morning, everybody. My name's Sally Andreu. I'm the Skills Hub Manager at Oxlep, and I'm delighted to welcome you this morning to this morning's webinar talking about apprenticeships uh, launching and launching the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards 2021. Some basic housekeeping for this morning's session. Um, please, if you'd like to ask any questions, there's a chat box should be uh, right of your screen, so, so use that and Mel will be um, watching or any of the questions and we'll have um, a session at the end for any try Q&A. Um, please have your mics and webcams off for pre uh, presenters will have the webcams on, um, but just temporarily please have your mics off. Uh, the session will be recorded um, and it will be available via Oxlap YouTube channel. Handouts are also available and there will be a survey at the end. It's great to get your thoughts um, and any feedback that you'd like to provide. Uh, next slide, please, Sophia. So the agenda this morning um, for the next hour, we'll be looking at apprenticeships. Uh, we'll talk about the skills priorities. Um, and capital projects that, some, that Oxlep have uh, co-funded um, over the last a couple of years since its formation in 2011. Um, we've got Richard Bayard will be talking about uh, direct, sorry, Richard Bayard, Director of Business Development, will be talking about the skills priorities. We'll hear from David Martin about the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Advanced Skills Centre and Jackie Canton, Principal Abingdon and Whitney College, will be sharing the vision for the new skills construction centre due to open early next year. Ian Parnham will be talking about the Oxford Biomedica um, and how it's utilised apprenticeships for their business. And we'll see a short video from Rosa Kernis from Aspire. Um, finally, um, we'll have a, a short 15 minute Q&A to answer any questions. And then from 9.30, we'll be launching the 2021 Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards, where I'll be handing over the, to Simon Newton, Managing Director of Dark and Taylor. So I'm delighted to welcome Richard Bayard, Director of Business uh, Development at Oxlep, to talk about the strategic work that we're doing here at Oxfordshire um, LEP. Richard. Thanks, Sally. Good morning. Thanks, Sally. Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to be here, albeit in the virtual world. Um, we were having a quick run through yesterday morning and we were surmising the uh, perhaps looking back and reflecting uh, uh, nostalgically that if we were gathered uh, together, uh, it will be bacon roll, coffee and orange juice time. So hopefully you've got those uh, to hand um, because even though we're in the virtual world, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't forego your, your bacon roll and coffee. And um, I'm just going to provide a very quick overview of, uh, of Oxlex priorities, certainly uh, in relation to, to skills um, and set the, the and, and, and that will provide the backdrop against which uh, these uh, very prestigious and very important awards uh, are set. So, uh, Sophia, next slide, please. So, hopefully you can see that. I was surmising whether or not it's a little bit early in the day to, to show this slide. It's incredibly busy, um, but it does provide um, the, the, the background. Um, and, and, and as the slide said, it, it's an overview of the skills land, landscape. It's complex. It's difficult to navigate. It's a challenge. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that Oxlep is very proud to do, and one of the things that we, 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 uh, we, we, we're very keen to do, is to help businesses navigate their way through that very complex skills infrastructure. To help businesses find the, the right support within that complex infrastructure uh, that they might require, whether that be uh, a support for taking apprenticeships, maybe advice around the apprenticeship levy. Equally, it could be around uh, some of the new uh, initiatives that aren't on there, for example, the government's kickstart scheme. So it's our role really to work with businesses, work with the, uh, the, the provider network and work with, uh, with schools to really try and, try and, uh, try and uh, demystify what is an incredibly uh, complex uh, landscape. It's also our role to maximise uh, investment uh, into the skills e ecosystem. And you'll hear more about uh, some of the investments we funded uh, later on this morning. Um, and also to maximise the opportunity both for Oxfordshire's businesses and our residents. It's our role as well to influence provision to meet, uh, meet demands from businesses. And if I set that in the context of our local industrial strategy that has a very bold ambition uh, to, for Oxfordshire to be 
a, a top three global innovation ecosystem by 2040. So effectively in a generation's time. Um, and the challenge that we lay uh, to our provider network and you know, they respond incredibly quickly to is, OK, well, if our, if, if our skills landscape is taking us down, uh, down a particular uh, route, if the data is indicating particular growth in particular sectors uh, by 2040, then there is a, a significant run up time and running time uh, for the skills ecosystem to respond to that, to generate the right training and support. Um, so therefore, it's our role to help work with uh, providers uh, to, uh, to, to create the right skills, um, both currently, but also, as said, uh, uh, projected skills. And again, you'll hear about a couple of, of, uh, of fantastic projects uh, that we, we, we funded um, very much in that vein of looking towards future, uh, future skills needs. It's also our role to recognise and champion uh, the role of apprenticeships. As I say, apprenticeships are a, an absolute key pillar uh, within the skills ecosystem. Um, they're a key pillar of our work. They're a key priority for our work. Um, and it doesn't seem that long ago we're, we're uh, of course, celebrating uh, Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards 2020. It doesn't seem that long ago because it wasn't. Um, and of course, uh, we've responded uh, uh, fantastically well. And we had some fantastic winners um, only a few weeks ago. Uh, but now we're on uh, we're on the uh, on, on on the path to the 2021 awards. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, uh, the Oxfordshire Apprenticeships Awards um, and our and our commitment, Oxfordshire commitment to uh, apprenticeships moving forward. And part of that is to encourage uh, businesses to engage in apprenticeships. There's often many because of the complexity of the landscape um, who kind of think, well, yeah, it's a good thing to do, but not quite sure how to do it. Um, and and uh, uh, that, that, that will, we need to harness uh, that, that goodwill um, and, and that ambition uh, for businesses. And again, it's our role to help uh, businesses support, uh, to, to, to support businesses to take, uh, go forward with apprenticeships and also to encourage young people, because, of course, uh, for a successful uh, uh, apprenticeship to take place, there are three, uh, three uh, uh, cohorts uh, uh, need to come together, a provider, a business and, of course, a young person primarily young person, of course, but now with uh, uh, a much broader age range. Age. And it's our role to be, in many cases, that connective tissue um, across those three communities. But we're here this morning to celebrate success um, and to provide the next uh, 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 cohorts of OA winners. Um, there are some fantastic uh, uh, case studies. We've all seen them over the many uh, over the years that the Apprenticeship Awards have been running. Um, and, uh, and, and very much to look forward to the uh, Apprenticeship, Apprenticeship Awards 2021. So that's the backdrop in which we're operating. Uh, Sophia, next slide, please. I, I mentioned uh, investing in skills in, uh, in infrastructure, um, and equally I mentioned that uh, you'll be hearing from, uh, from some of the, the projects uh, moving forward. Um, but Oxlep over the, over the past few years, as Sally as mentioned in the introduction, we've invested a significant amount, around £24 million of capital in our skills e ecosystem, in our skills infrastructure, for exactly the reasons I, I articulated earlier. Because, of course, the economy is changing. Um, often, when I, when I speak about some of that generational uh, opportunity and, 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 and growth uh, to 2040, it's also, you know, we should reflect that a lot of the jobs that the economy of 2040 um, will require a lot of the jobs won't have, have yet to be invented. Um, a lot of the skills have yet to be uh, determined. So therefore, it's, it's absolutely vital that we have a flexible, responsive skills system. Um, and we're very proud to, uh, to, to see, the, uh, see uh, the, the, the creation and opening of a significant uh, uh, new and refreshed uh, skills uh, ecosystem. And there's a couple of, of uh, highlights there. Uh, so for example, we invested in STEM Centre at Blackbird Lees, uh, an Oxlep uh, investment of four and a half million uh, alongside a similar amount from Activate Learning um, down, in, down in Blackbird Lees. That opened certainly three years ago. And that's generating uh, and, and supporting a, a, new, uh, a new generation of learners across STEM subjects. And of course, STEM subjects are vitally important to Oxfordshire's uh, growth um, and our future growth. Um, Equally, uh, we, we've invested alongside Activate again uh, in a, a care suite on, on site at, at, at City of Oxford College campus, just really recognising the, the need to strengthen um, the, uh, the, the opportunities in the health and social care sector. And top priority is the Livestock Technology Centre, a co-investment with Abingdon Whitney 
uh, college, just really reflecting uh, the strength uh, and the opportunity as well uh, in the agri-tech uh, sector and the importance in the agri-tech sector um, uh, for Oxfordshire. And um, alongside investments in hospitality, in digital and in, uh, in, in the uh, Oxfordshire Advanced Skills uh, Centre, which David will talk about uh, later. Uh, but we're very, very proud to say to work across the, 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 the skills ecosystem, the provider ecosystem, really to turn what are often uh, very early stage ideas into the reality uh, of, of new investment and new buildings. And of course, we do that to generate new learning opportunities. We do that to support uh, a, a very worthwhile learning opportunity uh, for people of all ages, but also uh, embedded into and baked into all of these investments is support for, uh, for, for, for apprenticeships and creating creating uh, state-of-the-art learning opportunities and learning uh, ecosystem uh, for young people and for apprentices. Next slide, please. Another busy slide, but if I can just very quickly run through this. Um, so alongside the capital investment, the, this articulates Oxlep's uh, revenue support for businesses. Um, so if I just go very quickly, and just draw out a couple of examples. Top left is our European Social Funded Skills for Business program. Uh, that supports uh, SMEs really to uh, to look at uh, training and development needs. Uh, it supports uh, SMEs in, to develop training and development plans. It looks at reskilling, upskilling, apprenticeships, T levels, um, engagement, and brokerage into into various uh, various uh, government initiatives. And um, that program has been running for uh, for a year and a half. Um, and really, if there's ever the time for that program, it's now because there are so so many businesses um, who are facing multiple challenges, who are maybe looking at reskilling uh, some of the workforce, some of their workforce, and also looking at uh, some of their some of their training uh, needs uh, in what is obviously a a a, a, a very difficult uh, environment. Um, bottom right, of course, is why we're here today. Our role in promoting apprenticeships, supporting apprenticeships, celebrating success. And really, as I articulated earlier, trying to be that connective tissue across uh, across partners. We also uh, 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 lead the skills advisory panel um, for Oxfordshire, and that helps uh, helps gather the data, uh, both current and projected, um, and really identifies the strategic skills needs uh, for Oxfordshire. Um, and, and 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 that is a, a DfE funded uh, 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 program. Um, that that really helps influence provision. Um, so there's a lot going on alongside the capital, a um, lot of activities that we can help businesses with, we can engage uh, businesses um, and help demystify uh, some of that very complex landscape that I set out uh, in the first slide. Next slide, please, Sophia. And as part of that uh, skills advisory panel work, one of the, one of the, fir the first things we did was really to uh, to, uh, to to do a piece of research into the skills ecosystem in Oxfordshire. Now, this is a couple of years old and appreciate the world has changed since then, uh, but we are refreshing it and, and we have refreshed data um, very, very shortly. Um, but one of the things that I think struck me when we look at uh, we look at the Oxfordshire skills ecosystem um, is that we have got significant opportunity for apprenticeships and apprenticeships growth really across the whole broad range of sectors, whether it's health, social care, hospitality, whether it's STEM, space, satellite, advanced manufacturing, construction. Um, and that really, I think, provides Oxfordshire um, and our businesses and our young people uh, and, other, uh, and, and all ages who are interested in apprenticeships, a really broad canvas of opportunity um, to engage uh, in apprenticeships and to really look at, uh, look at uh, apprenticeships as a, as a viable option. Um, we appreciate, as said, and, and, uh, that, that things are very, very difficult at the moment. Um, but I think as we uh, as we emerge from uh, in, into uh, in, 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 into uh, the post-COVID economy, um, for me, I think apprenticeships will be a much uh, will be an even greater part of our uh, economy moving forward. Um, and why is that? I think apprenticeships drive social mobility, um, certainly for those who uh, who for a variety of reasons. Um, are perhaps are, are, are slightly further from the, uh, from the labour market. Um, apprenticeships is a really good introduction into the labour market uh, and, and, of course, uh, the ability to continue learning and education. Um, but just to close, um, I would just want to, want to re reiterate that uh, you know, this is, apprenticeships are a key pillar of Oxlep's strategy moving forward. 
Uh, OA Awards are a key part of that, that celebrating success. Delighted to be here this morning uh, to really join in the, the celebration uh, of the awards uh, as we launch and we look forward to 2021. So thank you very much. That's enough from me. I'm going to hand over to David Martin now, who will tell us about one of those projects that we're uh, that, that, that we, we, we funded the uh, the Advanced Skill Centre. So, David, over to you. Thank you, Richard. Could someone can just confirm that they can hear what I'm saying? Yes, we can hear you, David. Loud and clear, David. Not that I don't trust technology. It's just I've been caught out once already. I, I'm moving house and managed to leave my laptop with all my um, slides up in North Yorkshire. So, hence, that's the only slide you're going to have to suffer from me today. Um, so, I'm just going to talk for the next 10 minutes and then uh, Take hey, questions. So, um, my name, as said, David Martin. I worked at UK Atomic Energy Authority for 45 years. I started back in the 70s as an apprentice and rose from from that level as a mechanical apprentice up to chief operating officer, which um, a position which I semi-retired from last October, um, and now concentrating on delivering um, apprenticeships for um, UK AEA, but more importantly for industry across Oxfordshire. Um, apprenticeships are something which are very close to my heart. Um, it's obviously given me a, a, a big um, step up in life from you know, a lad from a local uh, comprehensive school to uh, sponsoring degrees and all that sort of stuff. So it's a brilliant start, as Richard said, and I thoroughly recommend it to anyone who's uh, contemplating um, a professional career in engineering or indeed in any other uh, subject. Uh, apprenticeships are widely available across every um, every profession these days. So OAS, Oxfordshire Advanced Skills, is my brainchild, um, something conceived in sort of 2011, 2012. Um, I spent then four years looking for funding, eventually getting it from a uh, comprehensive spending review. Um, at that point, we had 12.1 million pounds um, to spend uh, on a facility at Cullum. Um, before we decided the shape of the uh, of the building and the equipment that go in it, we set out a mission statement. And the mission, um, and this is really important, <clears throat> and it's something I refer back to every board meeting. Um, our mission is to deliver high quality apprenticeships that are required by employers, um, delivered in the context of the workplace. And what that means is um, it's not an abstract experience. Um, you're there learning how to use various pieces of engineering equipment. Um, from the very simple to the very complex, but then you see how those um, those skills and that equipment is deployed in industry, um, and it gives you the idea of why you're learning it. So it sets that context, and that really embeds the learning. And I think that certainly was important for me, and from what I hear from um, our apprentices and employers, it's important to them. So that was the mission. Um, we set out with our 12.1 million um, and built a building. We started in 2016 with um, a view to opening the building in September 2020. Um, that was a month ago, but um, we managed to deliver the building 12 months earlier than that. So we actually started the apprenticeships in September 2019, um, one year early on budget and delivering at the higher capacity than promised. So I promised for my 12.1 well, million that we deliver 125 apprenticeships a year. Um, we actually built a building with a capacity to do 100 and, um, 160 a year. So the government are really pleased about that and I've made much use of that in seeking other funding. So we've ended up with a building which is 4,000 square metres as a capacity, total capacity for 320 um, learners, equipped with um, traditional machines, machine tools you'll see anywhere in any company, um, up to industrial, uh, full-size industrial robot, robots, um, through vacuum systems, cryogenics, metrology, materials testing, you name it, there's some of it there somewhere um, in, uh, in OAS. So we're exceptionally proud of the building, um, exceptionally proud that we opened a year early and the fact that we were, that our first intake um, exceeded our expectations. So we had over 60 apprentices start in the first year, which was really great. Um, our target for this year, um, was um, supposed to be higher than that, but then uh, the pandemic came along. But so far, and I say so far because we'll have an uh, intake in January as well, so far we've got an intake of 83, um, which again in a pandemic is an absolutely amazing, uh, amazing number to hear. So that's phase two, um, which is delivering the level three uh, design and development technician, uh, level four manufacturing technology, plus HNCs, um, and it will deliver degrees. They were supposed to start this year, but um, due to the dreaded COVID, we've had to set that back a year. 
Um, but look out for, for us next year, there'll be level six mechanical, uh, electrical and electronic degrees delivered um, at uh, OES. Um, such was the success of uh, phase two. Um, I decided it was probably a good time to go back to government and ask for some more money, which I did. Um, and I sold it on the strength of the, um, the, their industrial strategy. Um, we sought 38 million um, from government uh, to, de deliver, uh, to deliver a capacity of 120 apprenticeships, but these not at level three, but level four to level eight. So that's from sort of technician, senior tech level up to, uh, to PhD level. In, um, this would be in five specific sectors, in the space sector, nuclear sector, in the, in, you know, particularly in design, um, that is a, a, a skill set which is dying out, uh, energy storage, power engineering, which is sort of power electronics, which um, whether you're aware of it or not, um, feeds through most of our lives um, every day uh, in this, uh, in this uh, time. Um, but the power engineers are really difficult to get and um, the IET think we need about 200,000 over the next decade and we produce um, probably 200 a year. So there's a real um, need for um, to, 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 you know, game changer in that area. So power electronics and the other one, the, the fifth um, sector would be robotics. Um, government loved the idea. They gave us the funding of 38 million. Um, what we've promised is three centres, um, one at Cullum, which will be an extended facility I'll talk about in a moment. Um, that uh, will be, I think, yeah, 2,000 square metres, um, delivering robotics, um, some of the power engineering, some of the energy storage, um, and that was supposed to open in September 2023, but we're, we've managed, I think, to rain that forward and it will open um, late in 22 or very early in 2023. And my guess, best guess would be November 22, um, that will open. Um, there's also gonna be a facility up at Harwell um, that will deliver the uh, the newly, I don't know if people saw the news that the space technician um, standard was approved and um, announced yesterday. Um, we as STFC and many others were involved in, in the development of that standard. Um, and that we will begin delivery of that um, uh, apprentice, uh, sorry, yeah, apprenticeship standard for space technicians um, from um, September 21 or 22. Um, so we're really excited about that. It's um, a step outside our, our, our normal area and we'll have um, uh, the manufacture, Manufacturing Technology Centre, our training provider, supporting us through the delivery of that. Um, but the third centre will be uh, at a site as yet to, to, be, to be determined, but in the north of England, and that will um, concentrate um, on uh, zero net um, carbon energy. So there will be a bit of power engineering, a bit of energy storage, some nuclear design uh, and other bits and pieces. Um, and we're currently in negotiations with um, various sites um, of where that, uh, where that facility may end up. So I can't disclose any more than that at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, and there's another, um, plans for another facility um, which will be um, on the site of one of our future experiments that government is um, currently funding that's called STEP that's spherical tokamak for any energy production and that will be um, a, a fusion uh, nuclear reactor which will deliver energy to the grid electricity to the grid so this is a first of a kind proof of principle that um, you can actually deliver electricity with um, uh, with fusion um, this will require um, a huge number of highly skilled technicians um, flowing into that, both in to work on the site, but also in the supply chain to, to, to build and develop the, uh, the equipment. Um, so that will be essentially a carbon copy of what we have currently at Cullum built on the site, um, wherever it is in the UK, we're not quite sure that competition opens soon again for that site. So that's, that's hugely, um, hugely exciting. So if you, if you tell up all the numbers, um, that I've spoken about so far, our projection is um, by 2025 we'll be delivering um, 1,500 um, apprentices a year, so highly skilled um, people flowing out from um, our training centres into industry across Oxfordshire and indeed across the, the UK. The last thing I'll speak about was um, something very dear to our hearts and I think very dear to many people's hearts. Um, uh, is the uh, equality <coughs> and inclusion, diversity and inclusion. Um, this is something that we see, we've tried very hard with gender to get the balance from, um, you know, 50-50. There's no reason there shouldn't be, a, you know, that sort of 50-50 split in gender balance, but it stubbornly sits. Um, we think we're quite good at it and we've got it to 20%, but it sits there very stubbornly. 
Um, if you look at other um, characteristics, they're even uh, poorer uh, representation. Um, <clears throat> this is something very close to government's heart. Um, so we bid for uh, some more money, you'll be surprised to hear. Um, we bid for 10 million, we haven't received the, the funding yet, but we've got some very encouraging nods from Treasury and from Bayes. Um, and this would fund um, a pilot, or two pilots, one in Oxfordshire and one in Coventry, to look at uh, awareness and access to apprenticeships. So this is to reach out to the communities which don't traditionally see apprenticeships as a, a, a viable route to um, professional um, employment or to employment at all. Um, so it's to get into those communities, um, get them to understand <clears throat> the availability of the different training, um, how it may be applicable to them, um, you know, how that training can actually take you forward from um, you know, sort of a lowly technician level to wherever your sites, uh, you set your sites, you can go, you know, the sky's the limit, it really is um, with, with the apprenticeship training. And it's to get that, that message out there and get people to understand that, um, you know, the traditional old fashioned view of apprenticeships is not the, uh, is not how they currently um, operate or um, work. Um, and it's, uh, it's much different uh, uh, landscape out there. The other part of the pilot is the, um, the access part and that is to support um, <clears throat> people identified in those communities. So what we've said is we'll, we'll take some 10% of any cohort um, from these communities and we'll support whatever needs they have to get them into the workplace. And that may be um, through uh, additional language skill training. It may be through, um, um, I don't know, through uh, transport because, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's a challenge. It may be that there's uh, mental or physical uh, disabilities which we need to adapt the workplace so, so that those people can, um, you know, use machine tools or, um, you know, some of the equipment we have, um, that sort of stuff. So that, that's, the, that's the access part. Um, so that's actually something running now. Um, we, the UKAA have put some money into that. We're using some of the money which um, Oxlep has given us to support that, um, to support that, uh, uh, the programme until we get the, um, the, the full funding from government. Um, and that's uh, already up and running. And if you're on LinkedIn, if you look at someone called James Jackson or just view the feeds about OAS, you'll see there's a whole lot of stuff there going on already um, in preparation for the for this, um, this you know the full kick off of uh, this exciting project with the funding. So that's me done. Um, I'll take questions whenever the uh, whenever the chair decides is the right time. But uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for listening to me. Um, thank you uh, to the team at Oxlet for the opportunity to speak and for your support throughout the journey of OAS. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, David. That was really helpful. Um, that, uh, we're certainly going to have questions at the end of the session, so please hang on. Um, certainly, we've been delighted to be working with James um, on the diversity project because we see, do see the need to get more young people, certainly from um, diverse uh, communities, to uh, actually take part in apprenticeships. Um, so that's something that we are be working with um, and really excited to be part of that. Uh, moving forwards. Um, I'm delighted to welcome, um, next slide please, Jackie Canton, uh, Principal at Abingdon and Whitney College. Good morning Jackie and Jackie's going to talk about the Construction Skills Centre at BISTA which is a really exciting opportunity and I believe Jackie that actually the the building work is is almost complete or it's actually just like David coming forwards a little bit um, earlier than you were expecting. Yeah, so the, the plan is it'll open in February. So it's still a building a site at the moment, particularly inside, um, but we're, we're nearly ready to open. So we'll be launching it very soon. Brilliant, okay. I'll hand over to you. Thank you. We're gonna start with um, a short video actually. So Sophia, if you could play the video, that would be great. Thank you.
Thanks, Sophia. So if we could go to the main slides, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, next, next main slide, please. Great, thank you so much. Now, as you can see from um, the video, that really is very much still a building site. Um, and actually it looks completely different to that. Some of those pictures were only taken um, a week or so ago, but actually it's just moving on and changing every day. Um, and you can just get a sense there, I think, of the, the scale of this project. It really is immense. Um, it started off as four industrial units, completely blank shell, which we've knocked together. And we're now kick, kitting out in, into four separate um, units um, with all the different trade facilities that you'd expect. I'm, I'm just going to talk briefly um, about the centre itself. Um, and as you saw on the slides there originally on the video, that it, it, we're really... Um, designing this as a unique training centre. It's really unusual to have something that focuses so specifically on a, on a particular sector. Um, but we think that um, focusing on construction is something that Oxfordshire really needs at the moment. And this centre really will enable learners of all ages, whether they're young apprentices or people who are already working in, in the trade, uh, whatever background, and whatever previous experience they, they've got, as I say, school leavers or, or people working in trades already. And um, the experience that they'll get at the centre will allow them to become confident and competent professionals, um, whether they're specialising in, as you can see on the list there, plumbing, gas engineering, carpentry and joinery, electrical installation or property maintenance. We're going to focus on all of those areas. Next slide, please, Sophia. And I guess it's a question I'm asking a lot at the moment, why? Why do we do things and why have we invested um, in this centre? Well, I think anyone who lives or works in Oxfordshire can just see the scale of the construction work that's going on across the county at the moment. You, you can't drive through any part of the county without seeing a new housing estate or a new science or business park being built. And what that means is that there's such a huge skill shortage in the industry. Um, so it's, it's very timely that we're looking to invest in, in additional skills for the sector. It's a huge growth area for Oxfordshire. And in part, we know this because we built a construction skill centre in Whitney. Uh, it opened three and a half years ago and it's already full. It's absolutely at capacity already. The demand for young people for full time courses, which is what we have primarily at Whitney, is huge because they know they're going to secure um, a long standing and successful career um, in the sector afterwards. So as I say, that's full and we know we need to build some more capacity. We'll also be opening a new green construction skill centre in Abingdon and we've secured some funding for that. That will be opening in March 22. So together, the three centres will complement each other and really make sure we can um, address the skill shortage across Oxfordshire um, in, in construction. Um, and as Richard mentioned earlier, Oxlap are fantastic in terms of helping to secure funding and then sponsoring skills projects like this. So we couldn't have done the, the BISTA project without Oxlap. So again, thank you for that. Um, Sophia, next slide, please. What will the centre be known for? Well, um, it's very much um, pitched as a high quality training centre. Um, that's that's what we do. That's our, our approach as a college to provide training of, of the very highest quality. As many of you will know, our apprenticeships are graded outstanding by Ofsted and we get fantastic feedback from employers all the time about the quality of the students that, that we produce. Uh, so the training itself will be uh, very high quality and in first class facilities. As you saw there, we're literally building them now. They'll be brand new, shiny, meeting industry requirements all the way through. And our approach is always to work genuinely in partnership with employers. So employers have helped us to design the building. We've been in conversation with the CITB about what they think their employers need. So it's very much been a partnership approach right from the very beginning. The centre will produce ambitious, confident and highly competent apprentices, just as you'd expect. Um, but we're not just focusing on apprenticeship provision, although that will be a large part of what we do there. We'll also be providing um, trade certifications, particularly in gas engineering, for existing plumbers to upskill or, or recertify and to keep working in the sector. Next slide, please. So next steps for the centre, um, as I mentioned earlier, it will be opening in February next year. Uh, it's absolutely on target. We, we weren't sure whether it would be opening uh, the following September. So um, we're really pleased that it's actually going to be opening a bit early. So February next year. 
We're going to have a pre-launch event in January. Originally, we were going to do that in November and with lockdown coming, I'm really pleased we um, went for January in the end. Uh, but we're, we're already recruiting apprentices. We've got a waiting list at the moment um, and we're actively working with employers to identify opportunities for them to take on apprentices start, starting um, in February. We're developing a traineeship programme, which we think will be particularly important at the moment, given COVID and things. It might be that some employers can't actually take on an apprentice, even though they'd like to. So putting a traineeship programme in the pipeline there will help us to support particularly young people um, who might be unemployed at the moment, given the current circumstances. So that's a really positive development as well. And very shortly, we'll be able to take online bookings for our short courses. So the professional certification that I talked about earlier as well. So it's all go, really. I think that's the end of my slides. It's just meant to be a brief overview of what we're doing. Um, it's a very exciting project for the college. And as I say, it's going to build into the launch of the Green Construction Skills Centre in Abingdon as well uh, in 2022. So there's lots going on for us in the construction sphere. It's something we're really excited about and uh, we couldn't do it without the support of Oxlep. So uh, thank you very much for that. And thank you for inviting me to talk about it today. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you for your time. That's brilliant. Like I said, um, there's going to be a Q&A session at the end of uh, this section of the webinar. So um, if you've got any questions, please use the chat bar. Um, so we've got Rosa. We've, we've Unfortunately, Rosa couldn't actually join us this morning. So we've got a film um, we're going to show that she's created. Um, Aspire have been working with um, a programme that Richard mentioned at the start of this morning's presentation, which is Skills for Business. Um, it works with um, SME, small, medium size um, uh, enterprises up to 249 employees. So they're actually not that small. Um, and it actually helps with skills support. Um, so businesses can ask and we can help with identifying what skill support um, businesses need and actually signpost to providers and identify um, courses, either whether it's for staff, um, whether it's for uh, looking for apprenticeships or T levels, whatever that might be, this program can help. It's completely free. It has a consultancy value of about £1,800, which is a fantastic opportunity. And if you look on your sidebar, there's a handout section in there. Um, there's some webinars coming um, on stream, which is on Kickstart, um, and also encourage your people to learn poster which is a free workshop for um, businesses to attend as well as the awards launch information which we can share later on once we get to that part of this morning's section. So Rosa is going to talk about really how um, Oxford Aspire have worked with Skills for Business um, and looking at apprenticeships. So Sophia would you like to run the film please? Thank you. Good morning, my name is Rosa Kernis and I work for Aspire Oxford as a Pathways to Employment Coordinator. We've been asked to speak about our recent experiences in the Apprenticeship Pathway today. Thank you to Oxlep for asking us to come along to this event. For those who don't know us, Aspire is an employment charity and social enterprise and was established in 2001. We aim to empower people facing a range of disadvantages to find employment and housing. Each year, we support around 2,000 people across the Thames Valley in Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire and Berkshire. We tackle social issues through our unique enterprise model, running social businesses which offer professional management services to local councils, other businesses, academic institutions and private customers. Last year, we launched our own socially inclusive recruitment service supporting local businesses to meet their recruitment needs through coaching, workshops and in-work support for our candidates as they begin their employment journey. And it was through internal activity in our social recruitment enterprise that we were offered a skills analysis through the Skills for Business programme to consider the organisation's future training and learning needs. As you can imagine, we're a charity with an eclectic range of job roles encompassing a wide variety of sector skills. There was a detailed conversation with the Skills for Business Advisor who produced an in-depth training report. And as part of this report, 
there was an extensive menu of training and learning opportunities. A wide choice of apprenticeships was part of the training menu offer. Not just in sector and skills and levels covered, but who might be recommended as a training provider to support as part of the whole training package. All staff were able to reflect and consider their own CPD needs and aspirations. The comprehensive information listed in our training and learning has made taking the next steps very smooth and straightforward. We also had this business skills advisor support us with queries about prospective training and her skills and knowledge were completely invaluable. As a consequence of all this support, three members of staff are undertaking apprenticeship opportunities as part of upskilling their knowledge in their current roles. And also for the first time, Aspire has offered an apprenticeship to a young person in a new job role with us. We've also been very fortunate in that as a small organisation, we were also able to access apprenticeship levy transfer funding to support with our training and learning aspirations. This is making a difference to our workforce. Fantastic, thank you so much. Thank you Rosa for creating that film. Um, and I think we've just got a few minutes for any questions um, before we then start to launch the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards 2021. So Mel, have we got any questions, please? We haven't had any questions come in yet. I'll just give people a couple of minutes in case they want to type something in. Um, you're welcome to type a question into the questions box or raise your hand. No questions coming in at the moment, Sally, so maybe we should move on to the next section. Okay. But if you do have a well, question, please do type it in and we can always come back to you. Absolutely. Well, at this point, I'd really like to say a huge thank you to all of our contributors this morning. Um, it's, it's been really helpful and I hope that everybody's found it really useful and informative um, just to really share some of the work that Oxlap are doing. We, we do absolutely believe in apprenticeships. We always have since 2011, since OXAC was established. Uh, and certainly I'm delighted to, to start to help sign over to, to Simon. Yes, please, next slide. Um, from an OXAC point of view, we actually help administrate and manage the awards. We've been doing it and for the last four years. Um, and this is our the strength of our commitment actually in apprenticeships and, and really to see the value of, of apprenticeships um, across Oxfordshire and for not only young people but actually increasingly young people of all ages who are turning to apprenticeships to upskill and to retrain. So I'm really delighted to welcome Simon, uh, Managing Director of Dark and Taylor, who's going to lead the next section of, good morning, uh, next good morning. section of the launch. Good, uh, first of all, um, I just reiterate what Sally said, it was really interesting to hear some of those stories and I think it was very promising in the landscape for apprenticeships uh, in the air. I think one of the massive issues with the whole Covid crisis is that the younger generation are going to be really badly affected by this, but hopefully there are lots and lots of opportunities for people out there and when we finally kind of get over the, the bump that Covid is, we can, um, we can really develop and provide some fulfilling careers for the young people in the area. So it was really good to hear from everyone, fantastic work at uh, Oxfordshire Advanced Skills, Abingdon Whitney College, Oxford Biomedica, Aspire and all the team at Oxlet. So really well done. Anyway, I'm here to launch uh, the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards. Um, so good morning. I'm Simon Newton. I'm the Managing Director of uh, Dark and Taylor. We're a building services engineering business uh, established in Oxford over 60 years ago. And uh, basically we do apprenticeships. Our whole growth of our business is based on employing apprentices um, and developing the businesses. Um, this year I'm really delighted to say we managed to keep our usual intake of 12 apprentices into the business and at any one time up to about 25% of our workforce are training for an apprenticeship whether they're school leavers uh, or some of our, so for example, labourers and so on who are retraining in areas such as uh, data comms wiring, uh, fire and security technologies or, or electrical um, 
tightening as well. So fantastic. I'm also the chairman of the Thames Valley Apprenticeship Ambassador Network. Uh, and for the last four years, I've been involved uh, in the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards as well. So it's something we're really big supporters of. Um, so we're here to launch the awards today. Um, help spread the word on social media, please. Uh, we have a hashtag, of course, uh, and the hashtag is OA Awards 2021. And if you are in any way involved in the awards, whether you're a sponsor, the previous winner, applying, whatever, please get on board and go with the social media. The more we can spread the word, the better. Um, these awards were launched in 2017 to recognise the talents and achievements of the county's apprentices, uh, their employers, the training providers and the schools that support them. Um, for the last three years, the committee have hosted some fantastic award evenings. They're a bit like this time last year, we were all eating bacon sandwiches. Well, most of our award evenings, we've been you know, quaffing champagne and eating three course meals and so on. Uh, but clearly this year that wasn't possible. Uh, things were very different and we had no option but to cancel the physical event in April. Uh, but we managed to host a virtual event uh, in the form of a pre-recorded broadcast on the 1st of October. Uh, and the finalists were able to find out the results and uh, very successful. And although we weren't able to get together in person, it was a really special evening for all of our finalists and winners. Uh, who enjoyed celebrating with their families, friends. So we're going to see a little short summary film now just to give you a flavour of what happened on that event. So, Sophia, could you play the film, please? Welcome to the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards 2020. We're Matt and Sarah, Director of Highspec Composites Limited and also headline sponsor for the awards this year. I'm Simon Newton, I'm the Managing Director of Dark and Taylor and for the last four years I've been a committee member for these awards and I'm delighted to welcome you all to the fourth annual Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards. It will be very different from previous years but still a great opportunity to celebrate this year's finalists and winners. Delighted at Ignite Sport UK to win this award. We're so proud. We've got a lot of effort in Simon. Well, we, apprentices are a really film? important part of our business model, developing that junior workforce, helping them grow, flourish, gain confidence. We put a lot of effort in. They put a lot of effort in to be successful. And winning this award is just is just so good for everyone involved. It's a whole team effort here at Ignite. We are really pleased to have won the Micro Employer of the Year Award. Woo! Uh, can Good we... evening everybody, my Simon, name is Sam Popham, uh, I'm presenting the Special Recognition Award this evening on behalf of Popham Hairdressing. And the winner is... Autumn yeah, sorry, it's winning. Okay, great. I told you! Now, Autumn, our winner this evening, is not only taking her apprenticeship at the council, um, working with care leavers to support them into um, the world of work and, and, and independent living, not only has she furthered her apprenticeship and the work she's doing day to day, she's also, what really stuck with us was that she wants and has a vision to further the whole world of care and, and how, how individuals, you know, are, are helped into the world. Hi, my name is Sean Smith. I'm site director here at Albert Whitney and the winner is Taya, Taya Agnes, who works in the surgical intervention trials unit at the University of Oxford. Taya, one thing she had slightly different we felt to all the others was her enthusiasm for the programme hadn't just um, been seen by her, it infected the whole department that she worked in. We're very pleased to announce that the overall winner this year is Taya Agnes, who was the winner of the Intermediate Apprentice Award. Now, her application really did stand out to us because she goes above and beyond in her role. Congratulations, Taya. Well, well done. done. Well done, Taya. My name's Taya and I work for Situ Endorts. I'm so happy and so excited to have been chosen for the Intermediate and Overall Oxfordshire Apprentice of the Year Award. Thank you so much to High Spec Composites and Abbott Diabetes Care for choosing me as the winner. Thank you to all of our sponsors and supporters. Without their commitment, both in terms of time and money, these awards could not go ahead. We'd also like to thank all of the schools, the training providers and of course the employers. We'd also like to say huge congratulations and well done to everybody this evening, all of the finalists and all of the winners. You should be incredibly proud of all of your achievements. 
Um, we look forward to seeing where you go next in your careers, uh, which we know are going to be incredibly successful. So that's it. We've reached the end of this year's awards and we hope that this virtual ceremony has paid fitting tribute to some of the brilliant organisations and some of the brilliant apprentices that we have in the county of Oxfordshire. I'm back. Good. Um, well, that's very inspiring. Um, you'll be pleased to know that there is also a full awards broadcast, which is available on the Oxleb YouTube channel. And I'd encourage anyone who's been involved in the awards uh, last year to link to that and, and add it to their websites. I'm not sure it's available as a box set on Netflix yet, but it's not, it, it certainly be some of the other lockdown watching that I've been doing. So there we go. Anyway. Um, Last October, we held the 2020 launch event at the Oxford Science Park with around 100 people attending, and obviously we're doing it online now today. Um, but what the idea again is that we want to hear from some of the winners uh, of this year's awards and then give you all the details that you need to enter the 2021 awards. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the awards sponsors and supporters. Uh, who kindly agreed to carry over their 2020 sponsorship money to enable us to hold the 2021 awards. Uh, the awards evening will take place on Thursday the 6th of May 2021. Uh, we have no idea yet whether we're able to get together in person again by then. We have all sorts of, you know, we've got plan A, B, C, D, E, I think we might have got to F now, um, but so we may have to do something virtual, um, but it promises to be another fantastic opportunity to shine a light on Oxfordshire's Star Apprentices and all those organisations that support them. Right, now I'm delighted to introduce a fellow committee member and headline sponsor of both the 2020 and 2021 awards, Sarah Jaycock. She's the executive director at High Spec Composites. Hi, uh, um, I'm Sarah. Thank you for the introduction, Simon. Um, I'm the executive director of High Spec Composites Limited and also the headline sponsor of the Apprenticeship Awards for 2020 and 2021. Um, but I'm not going to talk to you about me today. I just wanted to say a few words about why you should enter the awards. Um, so entering the awards can be a huge benefit for everyone involved. Um, starting with apprentices, um, it's the perfect opportunity to have your hard work and dedication recognised and celebrated. It's also a really unique opportunity to sit down and evaluate um, how far you've come both personally and professionally and use your successes so far within your apprenticeship to really consider how you want to push and progress within the role moving forward. Um, being put forward uh, by an employer or having the support to enter can make apprentices feel really valued within their workplace, which in turn is invaluable within itself. Um, it also provides a unique opportunity to meet other apprentices um, within other sectors and learn about what they're doing within their roles, what they're doing for their businesses, and look at how perhaps their successes can be applied to your own apprenticeship. Um, you can also learn about the um, additional opportunities available as an apprentice within the local area. Um, so, for example, becoming an ambassador and getting involved in the, in the wider community. So, for an apprentice, it's a really great opportunity. Um, Speaking more from my perspective, um, it's also a really, really great opportunity for employers. Um, the application process itself, once again, provides an opportunity that you might not normally have to sit down, um, look at your individual apprentices and recognise their strengths, their progress and their worth within your business, making sure that you're supporting them in the way, best way possible, um, but likewise really rewarding them for what they're bringing to your company. Um, it's also an exceptionally great way to celebrate the opportunities that you as an employer are offering within the local community uh, to young people or to people starting a new career later in life, perhaps. Um, but it, yeah, it's a perfect opportunity to advertise what you're able to offer and why yours is such a great firm to join when um, starting an apprenticeship. Um, as a former winner of an apprenticeship award, I found the number of applicants and the calibre of applicants increase significantly after our win which certainly can't be a bad thing. Um, it opened doors to new networks as well, which is why I've been so lucky to become um, a committee member for the Apprenticeship Awards and also extend our own um, apprenticeship programme in-house. Um, I've learned a lot about what the other businesses are doing, um, how they're supporting their apprentices and been able to apply that within my own company, 
which again is just an invaluable um, opportunity. Um, ultimately, it gives the individual that you're supporting and your whole team a boost and a sense of pride in the company that they're working for. Um, in addition to it being a great opportunity for um, apprentices and for the employers, it also benefits the whole wider community because being part of the award sheds a light on the opportunities, um, the apprenticeships and the levels of apprenticeships available within the local area. It also highlights the sectors and the businesses that are offering these opportunities. Um, I don't want to go on too much because I don't want to step on the toes of the winners that are coming up. Um, but a personal note for me would be that the time it takes to apply is nothing in comparison to the benefits that can come from essentially winning an award or just applying and um, going through the process of applying and, and celebrating the individuals. Um, plus the night itself, as Simon touched on, whether it's live or whether it's a virtual event, is really great fun. Um, it means the world to those who are selected as finalists as win and as winners. Um, and hopefully you've just seen that from the recap video. So it's a, a great night to be involved with. Um, I would strongly encourage anyone considering to enter to do so. And of course, to spread the word to any individuals, any apprentices, any businesses locally that you think are achieving amazing things and help them to celebrate their successes. Thanks, Sarah. Um, right, so next slide, please, um, Sophia. So the next uh, person we're going to hear from is, is a very special person, uh, is Taya, who uh, not only won the Intermediate Apprentice of the Year Award uh, this year, but was also selected as the overall Apprentice of the Year from the winners of the four Apprentice Awards uh, by our headline sponsors, High Spec Composites. You've just heard from uh, Sarah from High Spec. So um, without further ado, Taya, could you please tell us a bit about where you work and your apprenticeship and, and what winning has meant to you? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Taya. Uh, great. Um, so thank you. Uh, my name's Taya and I'm an apprentice with Oxford University Apprenticeships working as a clinical trial support officer based in the Surgical Interventions Trials Unit at the Nuffield Department of Orthopaedics, Rheumatology and Musculoskeletal Science. I've completed my Level 2 Business Administration Apprenticeship and I'm now completing my Level 3 Business um, apprenticeship with Anglin and Whitney College. Um, I felt over the moon to have been selected for both the Intermediate Apprentice of the Year Award um, as well as the Oxfordshire Apprentice of the Year Award. It made, it made me feel amazing, I was absolutely speechless and I still am sometimes. Um, I'm extremely honoured and proud of this achievement and to be recognised for my hard work throughout my apprenticeship is just a wonderful feeling. It was also really fun receiving the trophies themselves, especially the bespoke carbon fibre trophy that High Spec Concerts made. I really, really appreciated this personal touch. Um, so looking forward, winning these awards has certainly opened a lot of new doors and opportunities for me. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to grow personally as well as promote apprenticeships further. Um, so if you're listening today, apprentices, employers, um, it's really important to recognise um, people that you think are doing well. Uh, so get nominating an employer or an apprentice who you think worked extremely hard over the past year and should be recognised for their hard work. Or likewise, you can nominate yourself for your achievements. The Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards allow apprentices and employers um, that support apprenticeships to get recognised and get the recognition that they deserve for their devotion and enthusiasm towards apprenticeships, as well as the hard work that they've put in. Brilliant. Thank you, Taya, and really well done on your um, winning of the awards this year, uh, really thoroughly deserved. Um, Thank you. Now, the great news as well is that Taya is going to be uh, joining us on the committee of the 2021 awards. It's something we like to do is get a previous winner on the committee, and it just helps to see it from an apprentice's perspective as well. So it'll um, be really good to have Taya on the committee with us for 2021. Right, the next slide, please, Sophia. We're going to hear from uh, two of our employer award winners um, about what winning has meant to them and why employers should enter the 2021 awards. And I can see next to me on the screen is Hannah Bladen from 
uh, who's the general manager at Ignite Sport UK, uh, and they were winner of the Small Employer Apprenticeship Award. So I'll hand over to you now, Hannah. Thanks, Simon. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Is the sound working? Yeah, we can hear you, Hannah. Brilliant. So my name's Hannah. As you said, I work for Ignite Sport UK. Um, I'm sitting in uh, Oxford City Football Club, which is our, our HQ, uh, a busy working football club, at least for another couple of days. So I'm trying to find myself a corner that's quiet. Apologies if, if you hear any background noise. But I'm delighted just to give you five minutes, really, of what this means to us uh, winning the 2020 award. Um, but first of all, a little bit bit about Ignite Sport UK and why apprenticeships and employing apprentices are a really important part of our business model. Um, we're a sports development company, an education and training provider, so we both train apprentices and deliver adult education, but also importantly employ our own apprentices as, as part of our junior workforce. So this year still we've managed to take on a further 10 new apprentices and typically we have about 10 directly employed apprentices each, each cycle. Um, we deliver sport in schools, uh, in colleges, uh, we deliver after school clubs, breakfast clubs, lunchtime clubs, community sports delivery here at the, at the football club, uh, community sports fates, any opportunities for people to be active. Um, we've been around about 20 years in and around Oxfordshire. So we, we employ apprentices as a really important part of our talent pathway. Um, we, we are continually seeking young people to join the sector, to see a job in sport as a really meaningful career, as a really uh, good career pathway. Um, and so we take on apprentices as a deliberate part of our recruitment strategy. Um, typically, we take on uh, year 11 leavers, so 16 year olds, although we do, we do take on older, but we do prioritise 16 to 18 year olds and typically on a level two intermediate apprenticeship or a level three advanced. Um, the most important thing for us when we're recruiting our apprentices is to find that right fit, that young person that feels right for us, but importantly, we're right for them. I very much talk about it being a partnership between us and that young person has to feel right. And uh, in our recruitment process, we, we tend to do uh, lots of focus on the people skills, the soft skills. Um, we ask young people to send in videos of themselves. We try and do taste today's what when we're allowed. We let them come and spend some practical time with us to really make sure that there's a fit and a partnership between that young person and Ignite Sport UK. And our young people we're looking for need to be able to demonstrate two things really, a passion for sport, so a passion for the topic and the sector that we're in, and also a desire to really want to work with young people because a lot of sports coaching or working in schools through sport is all about working with young people. So that's why we do apprentices really, they're a really important part as I say of our junior workforce, our talent pathway and offer a real vibrancy and energy and usefulness to, to, to our workforce and we do really genuinely enjoy working with them. So when we considered uh, applying for this award we, we, it really allowed us a chance to take stock and through the application process as, as we've heard from previous contributors allowed us to sit down and sort of really reflect on what we do and why we do it and really allowed us to, to log all the soft stuff, all the behind the scenes input that we provide to our apprentices to ensure that they have a really positive uh, learning journey with us. Often it's all these sort of unsung behind the scene tasks, the support, the phone calls, the mentoring, the little bits of, of the jigsaw that you put together to create a great experience for that young person. So the application process did allow us to reflect, to take stock, um, and actually surprised us how many really positive things we were doing that we just thought was normal and just what you do as a good employer. In that process also, I, I took the opportunity to sit down with our apprentices and ask them, what was it about their journey that they really enjoyed? What was it that was working really well? Why did they want to join us in the first place? Um, how did they find our recruitment process? Is it, is it what they expected? And that was really useful for myself as the general manager because actually the honesty of the replies most were positive but also there's lots of areas of improvement of things that we actually then also realized we could do better so it proved to us to be a little bit of a of an improvement journey as well sort of really understanding where we could be even better at our, at our apprenticeship provision so in terms of the application process i would just like to reiterate a positive experience 
not too much paperwork to fill out honestly you know it's, it's not a big heavy heavy document um it's a chance as i say to reflect to take stock a chance to engage with apprentices and make them feel far, feel part of the application as well so we submitted it and uh, didn't necessarily expect we didn't know how we were going to do and then we were absolutely delighted to be shortlisted and another bit of the process that i found really positive was was having the interview now at the time it was in a face-to-face -face interview myself and two apprentices to be interviewed about the paperwork that we'd submitted and actually that in itself was useful not not necessarily too much for me quite an experienced person and being used to being interviewed but the two apprentices i put forward to be interviewed that was a fantastic experience for them they really gemmed themselves up they really were ready for it uh, it was a really positive experience for them and as we all know interview is, is being interviewed and be, delivering a good interview is a really important life skill that some young people find challenging so that part of the experience was also really positive positive. And, and then to actually win in the award on the night you saw me in my kitchen with a glass of champagne and then receiving the, the lovely award a, a few weeks ago um, that really to the business and to the owners of the business and to all our staff validated the effort and energy and the systems and processes that we put into supporting our apprentices it reminded us of reminded us of why we do what we do and I think it was a really nice boost to the whole team especially at difficult last few months of all our staff that support our men our, our apprentices they mentor they guide they encourage they cajole they work with all our apprentices to ensure that they feel a really important part of the team and as I say in a difficult climate it provided us with a really positive boost uh, last month to to gain the award and it's something that we're really proud and we will be using and uh, as a promotional tool for ourselves to further recruit apprentices into next year and beyond so thank you to everyone who uh, backed us and allowed us to get this award thanks to my team who who are an integral part of of, of getting this award and to any employer out there who has apprentices or is thinking of taking on apprentices then I would definitely say do it it offers a real real good uh, dimension to any business in these challenging times and if you do already have apprentices then do take a little bit of time out to apply uh, put yourselves forward for a 2021 award it's definitely worth it good luck everyone and thanks for listening Anna, thanks very much for that. Um, so key messages there for all of you who are thinking of entering this year's awards. It's not it's not that heavy a document to fill in. Um, the benefits are massive for you as employers and for your apprentices. So please, please, please look to making an application for the 2021 awards. Right, I'd now like to introduce Caroline Cookson. So next slide, please, Sophia. Um, she is the lead advisor for employer brand and recruitment marketing at Thames Valley Police, uh, and they were winners of the Large Employer Award. Hello, everybody. Um, could there be just a short acknowledgement that you can hear me OK? Uh, Caroline, I can hear you, so far away. <laughs> Great. Well, um, Thames Valley Police were absolutely thrilled to win this award um we were we, we, we were we were up against stiff competition from two nhs um organizations so we we felt that perhaps given what's been happening this year that they might have the edge but um you know we were thrilled to win the apprenticeship offering at thames valley police has been evolving really for for the past uh, nine to ten years um, we initially were uh, back in 2011 uh, sorry uh, yeah 2011 we were a sub subcontractor of apprenticeships um, and, and largely just had apprenticeships um, in some of our support functions like ICT um, ad our administrative functions finance uh, mechanical engineers and and um, um, and, and similar um, but when the government announced in 2015 the uh, their program to um, enhance apprenticeships um, things became um, more challenging for uh, policing um, the college of policing introduced their policing vision in 2025 um, and along with that was a kind of reassessment of um, <clears throat> all the training that um, happens in various areas of um, 
uh, of of policing, um, including PCSOs and police officers themselves. So our learning and um, professional development department really took on this challenge to introduce apprenticeships more widely at Thames Valley Police. Um, you know, because of the very nature of the work that um, our frontline um, staff do, you know, they're not easy roles to um, adjust um, into apprenticeships, but they have worked very hard to successfully do just that. Um, so in 2018, we introduced our emergency services call handling apprenticeship. Um, for all our 999 and 101 call handlers, um, we now have 187 um, apprentices within our contact management function um, and their learning and training is accredited with an apprenticeship um, when they complete that and we know it's making a huge difference um, <clears throat> there's a, a lady um, called Lorna who is one of our um, emergency services apprenticeship apprentices she applied to become a call handler previously but because she didn't have a maths GCSE she um, was unsuccessful. The introduction by us of that apprenticeship um, allowed her to not only um, get her learning accredited with with an apprenticeship qualification but also she has achieved her maths GCSE at the grand old age of 49 um, and I can't tell you what a difference that has made to, to her and her self-esteem and her confidence um, it's been fantastic to see um, in 2019 we introduced the the police community support officer apprenticeship um, and we now have 92 PCSOs within the force that are completing that apprenticeship which is about 15 months long um, and in, in three weeks time, we will be introducing the police constable degree apprenticeship, which is going to be the route in for student officers who do not already possess a degree. Um, so about half our future police constables will enter this way. Um, now, one of the challenges that we've had in policing is the fact that you know some of our apprenticeships are only for those that are 18 or over um, and we wanted to ensure that our apprenticeships appealed not just to uh, college leavers but also to second jobbers or people considering a career change um, and you know th there's still quite a lot of stigma around apprenticeships only being for young people so we've worked very very hard to champion apprenticeships to those of all ages um, and we're really proud of the fact that of the 291 apprentices that are currently employed at Thames Valley Police 46% um, of those apprentices are aged over 26 and indeed 15% of our apprentices are aged over 36. Um, so we have worked very hard to promote apprenticeships um, and the benefit of having learning and training accredited. Um, you know, it, it, it's been um, tough, but we feel like we're really um, making some good headway. Um, the police constable degree apprenticeship which starts on the 23rd of November, we'll see our first cohort of degree apprentices. Um, there's 19 of them and they are aged between 21 and 43. So again, a really good testament to the fact that we've been able to champion apprenticeships and attract people of all ages. Um, it's um, for me, much like um, Sarah mentioned um, a moment ago, Writing the citation for the Apprenticeship Award was very straightforward and I actually found it really um, satisfying and it, it gave us a chance to really share that story of how apprenticeships have been um, evolved and embraced at Thames Valley Police and, and really how far we've come. Um, I would encourage anybody, uh, any large employers out there to um, consider putting forward um, an award um, and, and recognising the benefit and the value that your apprentices bring to your business and organisation. Um, it was it's fantastic acknowledgement for our learning and professional development team and also the specific departments, uh, particularly in our bulk recruitment areas like PCSO, 
um, contact management team and now our police officers um, where we've had to adjust processes and work practices to um, uh, you know a, a adapt to the fact that they are now apprentice apprenticeship routes in um, we also want to encourage greater diversity and inclusivity in policing to ensure that we fully represent the um, communities that we serve and we have seen um, in the past year uh, a really healthy increase in the number of um, candidates coming for black asian and minority ethnic backgrounds as well um, so for us winning this award um, is a testament to the hard work that has happened already um, and it gives us a platform for the next stage of development as we really bed in these new um, routes into policing and um, and, um, and no doubt continue to evolve and, and develop apprenticeships within Thames Valley Police. So um, we're very proud to receive this award and we encourage other large employers to um, do the same. Thank you. Caroline, thank you very much for that. Um, some great examples of how TVP have, have been innovating around apprenticeships, creating new apprenticeships and also just to be good information there about how apprenticeships are for people of all ages as well. So uh, really fantastic and congratulations on your uh, win this year. Thank um, you. So thanks to all of our previous winners for their words there. Now we're going to go on to a few slides just to tell you all that you need to know about the 2021 awards. Um, so there are 11 categories um, for you to choose from. So the first four of these are the apprentice categories as in previous years. So the higher advanced intermediate and special recognition apprenticeship uh, awards. Uh, we also have a school award again this year and we have a new award this year, which is for the school engagement employer award. Uh, and this has been developed from the work experience award. One of the big issues around coronavirus at the moment is that uh, work experience is proving very difficult for employers to offer to people. Um, so we're looking uh, for employers who've engaged with schools to inspire the next generation, perhaps by introducing innovative activities during COVID-19, enabling uh, young uh, school students to, to get an insight into the place of work. Uh, we've got three employer categories as in previous years. We've heard from um, two winners from this year. Uh, the category sizes have changed slightly this year. So uh, a small business is one that employs less than 50 employees, uh, medium business between 50 and 249 employees and large employer 250 employees or more. Um, we have the Shining Star Award uh, and that's for someone who's doing great things in their career since uh, starting or apprenticeship. Um, also new for this year is the Apprentice Champion Award, uh, which is for someone who's gone the extra mile to promote apprenticeships uh, or enable apprenticeships to continue during the exceptional circumstances we all face at the moment around COVID-19. So this could be a college tutor, a business manager, an enterprise advisor. Uh, it could be an apprentice themselves who are doing good things to encourage people to come in. So uh, someone who really champions apprenticeships. Um, and the overall Apprentice of the Year award uh, will once again be chosen from the winners of the four apprentice categories um, by our headline sponsor and the committee, um, our headline sponsors, High Spec Composites, who we heard from earlier. So how do you enter? You all want to know this. Uh, so you can, for the Apprenticeship, for the Apprentice Awards uh, or the Shining Star Award or the Apprenticeship Champion Award, you can either enter yourself or you can nominate someone. So you've got two options there. So you can nominate someone um, or you can enter yourself. Employers and schools who are applying for award must enter themselves. There's no nomination route for those. All of, this is the small print now. Uh, I'm supposed to speak really quickly here, but all the forms and eligibility criteria are available download on oxfordshireapprenticeship.co uk forward slash awards uh, all the links will be made available it's on the slide in front of me there uh, it's really quick and easy to enter and well worth the effort and hopefully the people we've heard from uh, this morning have, uh, have basically made that clear to you all um, you just need to download an entry form or a nomination form complete the questions on it and email it to oxlep skills at the email address which is skills at oxfordshirelep.com all the details again will be on the website uh, we're open from entries from today until midnight on the 1st of February. 
2021. Uh, and if you've got any questions, the team at Oxlab Skills will be really happy to help. They can answer any questions you've got. So all that remains now is for me to declare the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards 2021 officially open. Uh, get entering, get nominating, and encourage those people in your networks to do so. And don't forget our hashtag, which is hashtag it's OA Awards 2021. Thanks so much for attending this morning and listening to all this great information, and we look forward to receiving your nominations and your entries. Thank you so much, Simon. Thank you for running that section. It was fantastic. Uh, next slide, please. So thank you so much, um, everybody, for um, attending today. I uh, really appreciate your time. Um, there will be a quick survey. If you have got two minutes to complete it, we'll be really glad to hear from you. Um, there is information on the sidebar. So there's information about the launch, um, the skills of business um, workshops, and also um, about the webinar for the Kickstart program. So apologies for running over, but we thank you for attendance and really have a good day. And um, we look forward to hearing from you and having your nominations. Thank you.